Welcome everyone. It's so good to see all of you. Parang dami na na no. Pero talagang this is our first time to to have this webinar for men. And you know it's going to bless each one of us. But uh, before we will start, we start in prayer. Father, thank you so much for tonight. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to to meet, Lord, even through this uh, Zoom. Thank you for the technology, Lord, that in spite of this um, pandemic, Lord God, we are able to meet, we are able to connect. Father, thank you so much, Lord, that you will bless our time together. I pray, Father, that you will bless every heart. I pray that you would allow us to to hear from you, allow us to be uh, refreshed, to be encouraged. Father, thank you that you will uh, speak, Lord God, through Sister Madel. I pray that you would open our ears, our heart, Lord, to, to listen, Lord God. Father, thank you so much, God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I would like to introduce to you Sister Madel. Uh, pero una-una, the title of our... Our meeting tonight will be our uh, My Soul Find Rest in God Alone. Okay, Sister Madel is a trainer and a minister on the subject of soul shepherding. And you will really be refreshed and encouraged. And uh, Sister Madel, she's really an encouragement to a lot of women. She's been to a lot of places, not just to minister to to pastors, to wives, to missionaries, to women, and a lot more. Kaya even in my life, she's been a blessing every time na kailangan ng emergency prayer, si Sister Madel talaga yung tinawagan ko. And you can really come for if you need counseling, you need ministry. Actually, you can really uh, call her, contact her, because she's been to minister. And without further ado, I would like to welcome Sister Madel. Sister Madel. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Sister Madel. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Good evening, everyone. It's such a delight to see all of you. What a joy to see all of you joining our uh, webinar that my soul finds rest in God alone. And we will start off with silence. So I'd like us all to, to, to close your eyes. And just open your palms up like this. Open your palms up. And then let's just quiet our soul. And I want you to pray this prayer with me. I want you to inhale. Inhale deeply. Inhale the presence of God. Inhale and say this prayer. My soul finds rest in God alone. Let's do this one more time, sisters. Inhale deeply, and as you inhale, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Yes. Okay, this prayer. Pray with me. My soul, rest. my soul finds rest in God alone. In One God. More time. One more time. For the last my soul. I want you to inhale deeply and just inhale the peace of Jesus Christ. And I want you to. Pray this prayer. Say to your soul, my soul finds rest, rest in God alone. My soul finds rest in God alone. Amen. Okay, how was it? You guys inhale and exhale. <laughs> so welcome, welcome, welcome. We're delighted. We're very happy. You're able to join us for our very first BCI. All oh, right, I saw Maria saying um, she is into the worship and she's blessed. Adelpha, who else? Who among you enjoyed just just worshiping the Lord a while ago? Okay. Well, how about the rest? So, I am praying for each one of you. I pray one thing that I want you to relax. So maybe to, your day is a long day today. You had meetings, you had deadlines, go to the bank or what. But right now, in the next couple of hours, our agenda is to rest. To rest in the Lord. 
and to relax. So I want you to relax. Do not be afraid of what, what will happen to the technology or to, to the connection. We will have to trust the Lord for that. And I want to welcome all of you to just be who you are, your authentic self before Jesus. So if you are tired, if you are weary, if you're burdened, if you're brokenhearted, Jesus welcomes you to come. He is a safe place for all of us to just be in. And fourthly, I want to assure you that even if this is just a Zoom meeting, that you know what, we can really experience the very presence of God, that He is our Emmanuel. Now we are celebrating, we are about to celebrate Christmas. So Emmanuel means God with us. So I pray that he is present with us, with each one of us. I pray that we will sense His presence in a very special and intimate way. And let's just expect from the Lord. Uh, I, I want everyone to be in the posture of receptivity. So I want you to, your palms up, right, 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 like this. Just let, we will pray to the Lord. We will pray to the Lord. And I want to... I just want you to join me in this prayer. Jesus, you are here. Jesus, you hear me. Jesus, you see me. Jesus, you are glad to be with us. Jesus, thank you for your love and your compassion. And Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Come. I pray every single woman attending with the presence peace and the comfort, the rest that we that our soul longs for right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I'd like to share my PowerPoint. So let's just say our theme for this evening. Let's say my soul finds rest. My soul finds rest alone. Okay, let us pray this prayer all together. Even if you are muted, you just you join me along right where you are. Let's pray this prayer. O oh God of peace, who has taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved, in quietness and trust shall be our strength, by the power of your Holy Spirit, quiet our hearts, we pray, that we may be still, and know that you are God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we got I got that from the book of common prayer. So I'd like to read Mark 631. Then because so many people were coming and going, did need, the disciples did not even have a chance to eat. So Jesus said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place to get some rest. So I'd like to read that once again, because this is a beautiful picture. Jesus is inviting us then because so many people were coming and going that they did not have even the chance to eat. He said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Okay, women. Have you experienced that? Have you experienced not being able to eat because you are so busy and you are so tired? You were doing, you were striving, you were straining. There's a hundred things to do on your list for the day to the point that you were not even able to eat. Your, maybe you miss your breakfast, you miss your lunch. Oh, Res is smiling. You miss your, your, eat, your meals because you were too busy to even eat because of your very, very busy schedule. Okay, what is God's invitation for us? When you feel tired, when you feel worn out, when you feel burned out, when you feel like, oh my goodness, I'm dragging myself already because you are just really tired. And I want you to hear Jesus inviting you my dear daughter, beloved daughter, beloved daughter, I want you to come. Come away with me. 
by yourself to a quiet place and get some rest. Let's take note that when we are invited by the Lord, He invites us, come away to a quiet place. So make sure when you are resting, when you are wanting to get some rest or to retreat, one requirement would be a quiet place. So beautiful farms, mountains, you know, you can see the, the beautiful flowers and the plants, and it is quiet. You know what? You can hear even the birds humming. So it's a quiet place, and you're able to get some rest. So the requirement, come away by yourself to a quiet place, and you get some rest. Okay, so Jesus is inviting you to rest. Have you ever been invited to a wedding, to a birthday celebration? I remember I was invited to, to Faye when the son was playing a classical piano in Insular Hotel. You know, how do you feel being invited when, by someone to a hotel, to a beautiful place. You know, it makes you feel honored. Wow, I am invited. Oh, so many people in the church, I was picked and I was invited to come to this wedding, to come to this, to this birthday party or to come to this classical music, musical afternoon in a beautiful hotel. So such an honor. So I want every... Woman, listening right now, you are invited by God. He is inviting you. Come away with me, dear daughter, to a quiet place and get some rest. Okay, so rest is Jesus' idea. It's not Madel's idea. It's not soul shepherding. So I went to the U.S. twice and I did a training in an institute called Soul Shepherding. So in Soul Shepherding, I was taught that I was taught to really rest, to just forget everything, no agenda for the day, and just to be with Jesus. So I'd like to read this. This is a beautiful passage in Mark chapter 4, verse 13. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side and a furious squall came up and broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. I want you to pay attention to verse 38. Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said, teacher, don't you care that we are going to drown? In other translation, it says, Teacher, don't you care if, that we are going to perish? So Jesus got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Be quiet, be still. Then the winds died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Okay, I want you to imagine. I want to take your imagination to the Sea of Galilee in a boat, 12 disciples and Jesus. I want you to imagine Jesus sleeping, sound asleep. Actually, Dallas Willard said that Jesus was taking a nap in the midst of the storm. Can you imagine that? Can you take a nap? Can you go to sleep in the midst of the storm? Well, even this pandemic, there is an increase of statistics of people unable to sleep, unable to get good rest in the night because this is a storm. We are all going through a storm right now. But you know what? I believe Jesus showed us that, you know, even in the midst of this pandemic, we can sleep. We can relax. We can trust that Jesus is in the boat. 
Okay, I want you to tell yourself, Jesus is in the boat. You know what? Jesus is in the boat. Wow, yes. <laughs> so the disciples were probably, they were, I know that they were mindful that Jesus was there, but they were so afraid. They were terrified. And I wanted to, to think about the disciples were professional fishermen. Their profession, they are, you know, they go fish every day. Fishing is like a walk in the park to them. But what happened during this time? Even that Jesus was in the boat, they were terrified. I want you to imagine the boat is about to capsize. I want you to imagine the water is already coming in. I want you to imagine some of the disciples were trying to hold up. I wa who, where are you in the boat? Can you see yourself in the boat? Where are you in the boat? Are you the one are you the one trying to hold up everything on top so that the boat will not capsize? Okay, or are you the one under the boat at the very bottom throwing up maybe out of fear or out of seasickness? And I want to ask each one of you right now, what are some of the storms you are going through right now? This very present moment, what, what, what storms are you going through? How are you going you through your own personal storm? And I'd like you to pay attention what does this scripture tells you about Jesus? Can we trust him in the storms of your life? So question to think about and to reflect. Jesus can still come in his storm right now. Are you ready to trust him? Are you willing? Are you willing to say, God... I am going through the storm right now. This is very difficult. This is hard. This is painful. This is heartbreaking. This is crushing. There's so much sadness, loneliness. There's so much death going on right now it, it, all throughout the world. But is God trustworthy? Can we tell the Lord about the storm that we are going through right now? And can we trust him? Let's pause for a minute. And I want you to talk to Jesus. I'll give you two minutes to talk to Jesus about the storms that you are going through right now. So I'll give you two minutes. And I want you to just close your eyes and, and tell Jesus. Imagine Jesus with you in the boat. What do you want to tell him right now? Lord Jesus, thank you for inviting us that as we go through the storm, we're not going through the storm alone by ourselves. You are our Emmanuel. You are present with us. You are here right now. And you're, we can trust you. Lord, we bring to you every single woman attending this webinar, all the way from Singapore to the different places in Davao City. Holy Spirit. We trust you. Holy Spirit, we believe, but sometimes help us with our unbelief. Spirit of God, comfort us. We are not going through the storms alone, that you are with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So what were some of the emotions that the disciples were feeling during this time? 
they were terrified, right? They were terrified. And they were actually asking each other, who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? Okay, you see the emotions. They were so afraid to die. And Jesus commanded the winds and the waves. And immediately the sea grew calm. And this, the disciples had a new revelation. Who is this man that he can even command the waves and the wind to obey him? That he was not just a say, uh, he is the Messiah, he's the Lord, he's the Lord of everything. So I want to ask you today, how are you? Kumusta mang ka igsoon? How's your soul? How are you coping with, with this pandemic? How are you feeling? What are some emotions you are going through? Are you able to rest? Are you restful? Or the whole eight months in this pandemic, your soul has been very, very restless. Okay. I love that. I love that rest. Surrendering to God, my worries, insecurity, and fear. Rest, thank you for your vulnerability, your humility, and your honesty. Thank you for ad admitting before us that you are afraid. And rest, I want to affirm you that Jesus is a safe place. When you come with your fear and anxiety, that is the right place. He comes with arms open wide to embrace you, to hold you, to hold your hand and say, rest, I am with you. I feel you. I understand what you are going through right now. So that's why I need to ask, how are you? Because um, if you have a heart disease, some, you need to go for a checkup every year. So you go for an EKG, and then the doctor will have the printout and will read, uh, if your heart is healthy. So I wish we have like that. We have a machine that we can go and plug ourselves into to, to check if our soul is healthy or unhealthy. The thing is, voila, there's no machine like that. But thank God we have the Holy Spirit. And you know, the Holy Spirit can tell us exactly if your soul is healthy, if your soul is thriving and doing well in this pandemic, or if your soul is just restless. So there is no judgment and condemnation, mga iksoon. If you feel restless, I'm not pointing fingers at you. It's totally okay. That's the right emotion in this pandemic. So I want to share a personal story about a highly stressful situation and my stressed reaction to that. So the past month, in Feb, in Feb, I have to bring my daughter, I brought my daughter to Sambuanga because she is going to work at Open Doors International as a writer and researcher. So just think about it, she lives in Dabao and she will be transferred to Sambuanga. She doesn't speak the language. She, she, she is a total stranger. She is alone, alone, no family. Of course, I was there for a week, and then I, I, I went back to Davao after that. So it is very, very, I was so, one morning I got this news that the, the boss of my daughter was COVID positive. Whoa, so I, I can feel my my fear and anxiety from the gut rising. I can feel, Lord, I am very anxious. It's like, I can feel from my feet. It's like, what is going on? I'm even trembling because my daughter, of course, she has a boss. They live in the same company, right? So exposure wise and all like, Lord, I need a miracle. She cannot be positive because there's no one. There's no mom and dad to take care of her. 
I, I was, uh, I cannot focus. I was, I felt restless. I felt, wow, I felt powerless. Because like, Lord, what, what, all the fears and all the what if, what if, what if she gets positive because she, they live, they work in the same place. So, so what did I do? I was feeling the fear, anxiety coming from my God to rising. I was telling the Lord, Lord, Jesus, I need your help. I just felt very anxious. I felt as a mom, you know, wanting to protect the daughter, but right now I cannot protect her. I cannot. So just I went to the Lord and and just prayed through. But I, I acknowledge, I told the Lord exactly how how my emotions was was going through. So I was not able to focus. I cannot think very well. I was like, what is going on? I was my I was distracted, I was fragmented. But I'm thankful because Jesus is our Emmanuel, and I can come to him, and, and he can, Jesus can hold my hand and say, Mardell, I can't take care of your daughter. I am Emmanuel. I am in Samwanga right now as much as I am in Davao City. So, wow. I, it was not an easy experience, but I can feel the stress level was, very, was rising. But I am grateful for how the Lord just, by the power of the Holy Spirit, of course, not denying my emotion, because I can also deny my emotion. I can also go to my fridge and eat and eat. I can go grab ice cream, eat pizza, whatever. It's because sometimes I'm soothing my anxiety, but that is not the right place to go. Say, God, I go to you. I know that you are my Emmanuel, and you hear me, and you see me. And you know the depths of my stress because I felt very powerless and helpless. I want to thank the Lord because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of peace. I just sense the comfort of the Lord in that situation. Another stressful situation was one day, I, my daughter, one morning, I was actually sleeping. I was actually sleeping. I think I slept. I tried to sleep longer on that morning, but my daughter was already calling my another daughter, asking if mom is already uh, awake because I want to tell her something. So while I was, and then eventually I woke up and mom, Precious wants to talk to you. And you know, okay, so I did call her, what's going on? And I can hear my daughter crying. Mom, I feel so alone. Mom, I feel so homesick. Mom, I just want to go home right now. I feel no one, there's no family. It's been six months not knowing any friend, you know, because they were already working from home. So another, another, another stress, like, oh, Lord, you know, the mother in me wants to fix the situation, but I still go to the Lord and say, Lord, I cannot fix this. I don't know how to fix it. But in one of my prayers, as I was going through silent solitude and prayer, just telling the Lord. So I was writing in my journal, Dear Jesus, I felt very powerless. I felt very helpless about my daughter's situation. The mother in me wants to swim, to go to Sambuanga, wants to fly, if only I have wings. But I can't. I'm not a bird. I am not a fish that I cannot swim. So I just wrote in my journal, Dear Jesus, I surrender to you, precious is loneliness. Dear Jesus, I surrender to you, precious is sadness. Dear Jesus, I surrender to you, precious was crying in tears. My goodness, the tears were like, oh, and I can see in her eyes. She is very, very discouraged. She is really very, very depressed. So, but as I went to the Lord in my journal and talked to the Lord about it, I just sensed peace from the Lord again. Emmanuel is faithful to meet me in my deepest pains, in my most stressful situation, in my vulnerabilities as a mom. The Lord met me there. And the Lord, I can hear the Lord saying, it's okay. I understand you. You are a mother and you love your daughter so much. You want to be there right now 
while she is suffering. You know, just imagine your daughter is suffering and you are, you cannot do anything about it because of the pandemic. There's no flight. There's nothing. I'm trying to ask if I can go by the bus, but there's no, there, I think there was no bus schedule during that time. But when I go to the Lord, you know, I prayed this prayer. Can you share that, that scripture? I was lamenting before God. I was telling the Lord, my soul, why are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. You know, my, my beloved sisters in the Lord, we need to talk to our soul. I was really praying this prayer. My soul is downcast. Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. I'm glad we have a God whose name is Emmanuel. He hears you. I hear you. I see you. I feel you. I, I know the depths of pain in your heart. And I'm glad to be with you. You are not alone, my daughter. I share with you in your pain, in your powerlessness, in your helplessness. God is most real. So, okay, can we see this, this word again? Find rest, O my soul, and God alone. I think na, na, nawala yung in God alone. Sige, keep going. Pa. So, is your soul at rest? Is your soul at rest? Okay, I want you to be very honest with God. You know what? The Lord is full of love and compassion. I want you to remember God is not a God who points fingers. God is not a God who judge or condemn. God is not a God who shames. But God is a God who is a loving Abba. He's a loving Father. We can be totally honest with Him with our raw emotions. Are you, is your soul at rest? Are you living in the easy yoke of Jesus? The reference of that is in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, where it says, Are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out with religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you will. God will give you restoration. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. That was God's invitation. Are you struggling with worry? I love how Res was very vulnerable before all of us, that she was afraid. There was fear and there was anxiety. So what are some reasons why your soul is, is not at rest? Why do you think? I want you to think about it. What are some reasons why my soul is not at rest? Okay. So number one reason, this is coming from my mentor and my teacher. His name is Bill Gualter. He is a psychotherapist and also spiritual director. So this Bill Gualter and Christy Gualter are doctors in psychology. And they are founders of Soul Shepherding where I got the training. So he said that the reason why we are not at rest because we are we want to control our lives we want to control the outcomes of our lives we are not willing to we we want to deny the feeling of sadness loneliness anger um depression discouragement despondency we don't want to go there because those are painful situation but that is not also very healthy that is called repressing your emotion, which is damaging to your soul. So I don't want women to damage your soul. So we don't want to control our emotion. But of course, you cannot just share on Facebook and run. But you need to find a soul friend. You need to ask the Lord, Lord, can you give me a soul friend? Someone who is an ambassador of Jesus. Someone who is full of empathy. Okay, actually, Bill Gualter said, that empathy is the oxygen of the soul. So how many of you needs 
oxygen of the soul right now needs empathy empathy meaning you know, i love that i love rest uh, raising your hand i i need i need empathy you know what is that empathy you're not fixing someone else's problems empathy is i hear you i see you i hear you i see you and you know what i love you i'm glad to be with you there's like 100% attunement, meaning I'm present with you. I'm not thinking about my meeting or my deadlines, or I'm not thinking about my work while I'm listening to you. So you need a soul friend because each one of us needs, needs to have that empathy of the soul, empathy which is the oxygen of the soul, and only God can give you a soul friend. So you begin to pray to the Lord. Another reason is that submission to God and be free we are creatures with wills you know we it's hard to submit even our government social distancing wearing mask um and even during ecq curfew you, you you can only go out monday friday and and you know but sometimes we even rebel and do not submit to this to the laws of our land i'm, I'm sad about it so more so can we submit to god and be free submission and i would like to add surrender lord i submit to you i submit my storm to you and i surrender and refuse to try to control the outcomes okay women stop controlling your husbands women if you're a husband so rest wala ka pang husband so you cannot control anyone yet um so Mothers, you cannot control your children, okay? Please do not control your children. Our Father in heaven gives us this gift called free will, the right to choose to follow him or not. He does not force us, okay, Madel, you need to submit to me. No, our God, our Abba is a, the greatest gentleman I have ever known. He will wait for me. He will wait for me to submit, to surrender, to humbly say, God, I cannot do this. God, I feel very powerless. God, I need your help. God, I need to surrender my daughter's condition to you. He waits. But the moment you submit and surrender, you also experience the blessing called freedom. Your soul is at rest because you know that God God can control the outcomes. You, it's not no longer you controlling the outcomes, but you are already submitted and surrendered to the outcomes of the Father. So if you are familiar, uh, I, after this session, I want you to check soul shepherding and I want you to check apprentice prayer. Because part of the apprentice prayer is, Lord, I relinquish my agenda for this day and I submit myself to you Today, my plans, everything that I am planning, your will, your way, your time. So when my agenda does not happen for the day, God has different agenda. Normally, God has different agenda than ours. I am not upset. I'm not frustrated. Like, oh, God, you wanted me to talk to this person because this person was really discouraged today. And so other agendas of mine were crossed, meaning it did not happen. So in the past, I can be very upset. I can be really frustrated. But right now, you are living each day relinquishing, submitting to God and His will. And you know what? When I, when I live that, you know, pray the apprentice prayer every single day in the morning, in the evening. Print that out, apprentice prayer. I'm going to share that with you so later. Yung, yung, anong pala ng prayer na yon. But that has been a powerful, powerful pray, prayer. Okay, third, sisters, you can talk to your soul. Diba? Yung kanta ni Genesis a while ago was in Psalm 103. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He forgives all my sins. He heals all my diseases. He redeems my life from destruction or from the pit. He crowns me with love and compassion. He satisfies my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like an eagle. 
sometimes we need to talk to our soul. And then you can do this breath prayer. Okay, let's, let's, con- let's we will have a simple, repeatable, and doable spiritual exercise. Okay, are you ready for this exercise? So I want you to open your palms again, like this. Let's pause and practice this breath prayer. So I want everyone to inhale deeply. And as you inhale, let the Holy Spirit fill you with His peace. Say this prayer with me. Inhale and say this prayer. My soul finds rest in God alone. Let's do it one more time. Inhale deeply, and as you inhale, Spirit of God, fill my heart with your peace. Say this prayer with me. Inhale deeply, inhale. My soul finds rest in God alone. Let's do this for the last time. Inhale deeply. This is very helpful, mga kapatid. Inhale deeply. And as you inhale, let the Holy Spirit fill your soul with His peace. And say this prayer, My soul finds rest in God alone. Amen. How was it? How was the exercise? Okay. How are you all doing? Did how are you feeling? What is going on in your heart as we practice that the breath prayers? Is this something new for you? Is this something new? You have not done this at all? I hope that this is very helpful. Kurt Thompson, he is a doctor, he is a neuroscientist, and I have I have started reading his book. Um, that that our breathing, our when we are praying, you know, my soul finds rest in God alone. It connects to our brain, and it helps bring healing to the trauma that we are going through. So all of us are going through trauma right now because of this pandemic. So even these bread prayers. Um, is very helpful. There are breath prayers actually um, in soul shepherding, so you can check that out. There are like a lot of breath prayers in Jesus' name, not my strain. If you are always striving and straining, this is a good prayer. Breath prayers for you in Jesus' name, not my strain. Or if you feel like you you feel very alone, you feel I don't you don't belong to anyone. You can just say this bread prayer by Brennan Manning, Abba, I belong to you. Abba, I belong to you. And just keep repeating that. Keep repeating the Abba, I belong to you until you sense the peace of God in your soul. This is very simple, practical, and doable, repeatable spiritual exercises. Because even in the jeepney, but you don't have to really verbalize your bread prayers. <laughs> Maybe they will think, are you going crazy? What is going on with this woman? But I actually, honestly, it's like I love Brother Lawrence because he said practicing the presence of God. So we're, even when I'm doing the dishes, I can do bread prayers. I am riding a jeepney or I'm doing something. I'm just praying to the Lord and just really sensing the Lord in my spirit. Okay, so I have good news for all of you. But I shared with you that empathy is, empathy is the oxygen of the soul. It's not in my PowerPoint. Parang nawala siya. <laughs> empathy is the oxygen of the soul. So that is not coming from me. It's from Bill Golter. So I have good news for you. If no one is providing you empathy, you know, your empathy is not cheerleading. Empathy is not, you know, reassuring someone. It's okay, it's okay. No, it's, that's not empathy. You know, 
I love that because I learned from my soul shepherding training that God has the perfect empathy for every single woman present in this webinar right now. Meaning, God says, I hear you. I see you. I love to connect with you. I'm glad to be with you. I see your I see you and I feel you. God is there. God is really, really present. So because God provides empathy, I am praying that even when our soul is restless or if our soul is not really healthy right now, is in not the right place, but as we allow the Father, I want you to talk to the Father and find a quiet place after our webinar. Sometime this week, find a quiet place. To, to just be with Jesus and just enjoy Him. So just before this webinar, I went walking uphill and downhill because I live in GSIS. And I see the sunflower. I see the sunflower and then I see, God, you are here. I see you in the sunflower. It's beautiful. And you know what? You know why? My heart was captured by the sunflower because my daughter loves sunflower. So every time I see this sunflower on the street where I live, I live in JSI in Saturn Street, I would always bring to the Lord in prayer, my daughter, Jesus, my daughter loves sunflower. I don't know how you're going, what, you're going, what she's going through right now, but Lord, would you comfort her? And so what is an amazing answer to that prayer? I want to share. One time, somebody invited her for a birthday party after Seven months of being locked down. Woohoo! Celebration! She said, Mom, I'm going to a birthday party. Sino yung nag birthday party? Hindi Christian. Owner siya ng kanyang apartment. Land, landlord. Landlady niya. But Mom, I, my soul cries out for community. My soul cries out for talking to real people, not Zoom, not webinar. So, I told the Lord, wow, that, Lord, thank you because you're answering our prayers. Another answer to prayer that she met a couple, just I think a couple of weeks. She said, this is the first time I felt listened to. This is the first time I felt safe to tell them that I, I feel really alone. And she said, you know what? Wow. So I was in my heart, in the depths of my heart, I was celebrating. I was Giving thanks to the Lord because God, you are alive. You are here. You hear the cry of Madel's heart for my daughter. I, I would pray in a very tangible way, Lord, you can make things happen. You provide real people, Lord, that my daughter can talk to. And you know what? The, one of the greatest blessings, actually, is that I prayed to the Lord. My daughter loves cats. My daughter loves cats. And she has a cat in the house. Her, his name is Garfield. We love cats. Cats are precious. Helps us in our sanity, distress us, makes us happy, makes us live in the kingdom of God to be playful, to be, to be forgetting all the stresses of life for the day and just relax. When I see the cat sleeping, I would always be reminded by God, to, I'm invited to be still. But they'll follow the cat. Follow the cat, be still, and know that I am God. So my daughter, um, I pray to God, Lord, if, if, if it's not too much, Lord, I really pray, can you give my daughter a cat in Zamboanga? So because they, she cannot bring the cat, it's too much of a hassle, a lot of money to pay, and a lot of injections. Medically, it's not, it, maraming, you have to go through a lot of challenges. You know what? I am thankful because you know what? The Lord provided a cat for precious. And what's the name of the cat? Batman. The name of the cat is Batman. Okay, Batman keeps my daughter company. Batman eats the food that my daughter, she buys food for the cat. So I think that, uh, ano na siya, mayroon siyang boss, na, the boss feeds him. And I think my loyalty na siya, he, he comes home and you know what? I think that my daughter talks to the cat. Maybe it's, it's, it's also helping her. But you know what? God is a God who truly hears. So even if it's just a cat, parang yan lang, pero sa akin, Lord, grabe, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can think or imagine. And Jeremiah 33.3 3 says, 
you know what? Call unto me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. I am very thankful. Powerful testimonies. I still have not understand. I still don't know the whys, why my daughter has to go through deep darkness right now. But I, I tell her, Anak, I pray you will find treasures in the darkness. I am encouraging her in the dark. That is where God's presence is very, very real. You can seek him right there in your pain, in your loneliness, in your, you know, you know, being homesick. And, and she just felt alone because hindi siya marunong magsalita. Tapos pag maglakad-lakad siya, ginatingnan siya ng mga tao. Mom, I don't know why people are looking at me. So I, I hate it. I don't like it. So like, I don't know what, but I don't know. But like pride, that we can, we don't, I don't know. The, I don't have the answers to what you're going through right now. But, but I, we can always trust the father about it. One of the testimony of my daughter was, Mom, I am so grateful I can be who I am to you. I can be real. I can tell you exactly my emotion that I am brokenhearted, that I am lonely, that I am upset, I am frustrated, that I am at the end of my robe. I want to give up. And, and you know what? You're listening. You know, I'm not fixing my, my daughter. I'm not controlling her. So I'm just like, okay, I hear you, Anna. I hear you. That's empathy. And I believe because I'm prov pro providing that empathy for the soul of Precious, Precious is still able to carry her job. And we're trusting the Lord each day. I told her, Anak, one day at a time. Just one day at a time. Let's not figure things out. Let's not go there. Let's just trust the Lord. Let's just pay attention to God's invitation to us. To Will you trust me? Will you trust me in this? So in closing, hindi po tayo closing kasi I remember that song and if you, I'd like to sing that song. I'm not really a singer like Genesis, so, but bear with my voice. Um, it's a line about, about our theme. So it says, Find rest, my soul, in Christ alone. Know His power in quietness and trust. When the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are King over the flood I will be still and know you are God I'd like to sing it again find rest my soul in Christ alone no he power in quietness and trust when the oceans rise and thunders roar I will soar with you above the storm Father you are king over the flood I will be still and know you are God. I will be still and know you are God. Amen. So, okay, relax and refresh. Thank you, Jesus. Um, so find rest, my soul, in Christ alone so i want you to think about your soul can only find rest in god and god and god alone so you need to make an appointment you need to have an a date 
a quiet day with Jesus or like a day with Jesus where you can go to the beach and just Im just enjoy the waves you can hear the crushing of the waves and it's very relaxing or you can go to the mountain by yourself without a best friend or anyone na magsamok sa imo this is my day with Jesus i just want to be with Jesus because my soul find rest in you alone. I don't know where you are at right now. I don't know what emotions you are going through. But even as I have been praying about this, I felt the Lord wants me to share the stories about my own pain and my brokenness and my own restlessness and how the Lord, my Emmanuel, Emmanuel, met me in my own pain and brokenness. I believe the same way that God has met me is the same way that I believe with all my heart that He is able to meet with each one of you. I pray, you will not, uh, time that even, we, we still have time, we will have a time, moments of prayer, and we will just pour out our hearts to the Lord in prayer. I want to assure you as well that Jesus still comes the storm and that we can trust him. And we don't have to figure out next week, next month. We don't have to have everything laid out and planned. You know, we can trust the Lord because he is our Abba. He is our Father. And I want to tell you, women, you are very precious to him. He calls you by your name. You, he says, you are mine. Do not be afraid because I am with you. I am for you. I will never turn my back on you. I will never run away. I will never ever shut the door. When you are in, I am in with you. And I am with you to the very end of the age. I want to thank you that you, have, you did some... Uh, thank you for writing this, the, the, the song that I just sang, because this song was, has been a song to me, not just this week, but even bef before this Zoom, I've been resting a whole lot. I have been just, Lord, I am not straining or striving. I need to rest. I need to practice what I'm going to share. So I just want to be in Abba's arms, resting because the Lord is working. God is working. He is your Emmanuel. So right now, I want you to, where you are at, to turn it into your altar, if it's okay with you. Diba sa BCI, Pastor Dave would call us to the altar and bring our hearts, our pains, our brokenness to the Lord. Kaya wala man tayo altar, kung asa ka karoon, naglingkod ka sa imuhang lingkuranan in your room, in your room, in your bed. It's okay if you're lying down. God does not mind. He, he, he's happy. He delights to see you lying down. He knows you're, you're tired. So I, I want us to, just for a couple of minutes, just be, be, I want you to be still and to know that he is God. And what is God's invitation for you? As you listen to the stories that I shared with you, what resonates with you? What has been God speaking to you? If, even if you are moved to tears, I can see some people are crying, are moved to tears. That, that's, that's a Holy Spirit touching you. Your tears are very precious to the Lord. You know, those tears are, are kept in a bottle. And you know what? Not just kept in the bottle, but you know, God's word says that God one day will wipe away every tears from our eyes. In the book of Revelation, one day, we just don't know when that one day will come, but this is the glorious hope. One day, God will wipe away every tear from my eyes. No more pain, no more sorrow, no more COVID, no more heart disease, no more cancer, no more broken homes, no more homesickness and loneliness. God will wipe away every memory of pain because we will be with God for eternity. Would you like to do that? Right where you are at, Let's take five minutes, um, maybe five, five minutes to, to do that, to just, I invite you, tapos I will, I will pray for, I will 
let's just take this time to pray. Tapos later, for those of you kung naay yung mga sakit, uh, you can just type in here if, if you need prayer for your for your sickness, if you are having body pains or what, we will also pray for you. But let's just come to the Lord in prayer. And I want you to just be silent before the Lord and just pour out. I encourage you to just talk to Him. He wants to hear you. Okay, so how was it? How was your our time of silence, hopefully solitude and prayer? And I just want to really thank Sino ang nagpa-play doon sa beautiful, ano? Ah, Tita Ao? Si, si Ma'am Aurora. Wow, palakpakan, clap your hands. That was beautiful. That was a gift. Thank you, Tita Ao, for taking the initiative to to play that beautiful, very comforting to the soul, healing to the soul. So I just want to thank every single beautiful woman. You are beautifully and wonderfully made. Thank you, thank you so much for your time and for your attending. I pray that this has been a restful, relaxing, just meeting with God and just being allowing Him to love, love us with all the heart. Praying for all of you. Blessings. Thank you. Thank you. And keep living in the rhythm of the current life as Jesus. Said.